Hello, I'm Dr. Gordon Hamilton, and this week on Math Pickle, you're going to see a beautiful puzzle to engage your students in prime and composite numbers. The puzzle is in the Sudoku tradition. It's called Mimitsu, after the Japanese word for earthworm. It's probably the best puzzle I've ever made for elementary school. You start with a worm winding its way through a compost heap. There's some clues. First of all, you have barriers. The worm can't pass through these barriers. Second, there's some numbers. Now, the worm has to start from 2 and wind its way through to 38. That's true for all Mimitsu problems. Where would 11 go? Well, it has to go somewhere around the 10. Let's say it goes there. And the 12 would have to go there. 13, 14, 15, 16. We're making some guesses here. Where would 9 go? Well, it has to go somewhere around the 10. Let's guess that it goes there. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Okay, so we've got the lower part of the earthworm complete. Now, does it work? Let's look at number 10. Well, 9 goes to 10, that's open, that's good. 10 goes to 11, that's open. 6, 8, and 12 should also be open because they share a common factor with 10. They are, that's good. 7 should be closed. And that's true, it's closed. So 10 looks like it's working out well. Do you see any problems? Let's look at number 14, for example. 13 goes to 14, 14 goes to 15. 4 and 12 share common factors with 14, so those are both open, that's good. 3 and 5 should both be closed to 14 because they do not share common factors. However, only the 3 is closed. The 5 is open, so that's, that's not right. So already we have a mistake, so we have to go back. Let's try 9 here. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, and where would 11 go? Well, let's put 11 there, 12 there, 13. Well, there's two places for 13. Which one should we choose? Well, the upper one has to be either 38 or 2. That's, it has to be either the starting one or the last one, if we put 13 in the lower one. But that's not going to work. 38 is way too far away from the 30. You're not going to be able to get there. And it's too far away from the 4 to get there if it's 2. So, no, that won't work. So we have to have 13 there. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Does this look good? Let's look at the 6. 5 goes to 6. 6 goes to 7. And we have 15, 16, and 8. They all share a common factor, and that's good, because they're all open. And 6 and 17 do not share a common factor, and that's closed. This looks good. In fact, this is on the way to the solution. I'll keep on going. Where does 21 go? Well, the hint is in the 4. Do 4 and 21 share a common factor? No. That means that the 21 must go up here. Okay, that would be 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. Everything else is forced here. So we, we've completed it. That's the answer. That's how you solve a Mimitsu puzzle. But one of the nicest things about Mimitsu is that it's easy for students to create their own puzzles to give to you and to give to their peers. Let's look at how a student might start off making their first Mimitsu puzzle. And then we'll go on and we'll figure out how a student might get really creative to come up with some more advanced design criteria for the Mimitsu puzzle. Students start with placing 2, then 3, 4, 5, and they keep on going till they get to 38. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. We're finished. Now we have to add constraints or barriers. Those barriers go up between numbers that do not share a common factor 
and are not consecutive. So is there a barrier between 11 and 12? No, because they're consecutive integers. Is there a barrier between 12 and 21? No, because there's a shared common factor of 3. Is there a barrier between 21 and 17? Yes, because they do not share a common factor. Now the students have to make a new grid, that's the solution grid that they've come up with. Now they have to make a compost heap where they erase a whole bunch of numbers. There we go, and that's the puzzle. You'll find Mamitsu puzzles under the Grade 6 section on mathpickle.com. They'll range from beginner puzzles to advanced to puzzles that don't have any number clues at all, the dragon worms. Students should be encouraged to solve a few puzzles at a level of difficulty before they get creative and create their own puzzles. So before they create a, an advanced puzzle with only a few hints, they have to be able to solve an advanced puzzle with only a few hints. For the experience class, try giving them extra design criteria, like getting them to create a Mimitsu with the least number of barriers, or getting them to create a Mimitsu where the numbers are in some nice pattern, or the barriers create some nice shapes. I hope your students enjoy Mimitsu and learn prime and composite numbers as a side effect.